Yes, so uh, Namra here, uh, she's the International Admissions uh, Advisor at Huron in Canada. And uh, today we will be gaining some valuable insights into the university, the Canadian education landscape, uh, the campus mm -hmm. life, admissions office, admissions process, and so much more. Uh, Namra, over to you. Yes. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. So before I get started about studying in Canada, I know a lot of you have different questions. So if you want, you can pause me at any time or I can take the questions towards the end as well. And I would like to get started by introducing myself. So my name's Namra. I went to Huron as an international student. So Huron's also located in Canada. So I have personal experience of being an international student in Canada and I ended up studying business. So I did my specialization in finance. So I have a lot of different opportunities that I took up as an undergraduate student. So I'll just go through and walk you through the way of what Canadian education is about. And then if you have any questions, I'll also leave in my own personal experience as well. So why is Canada such a hot topic for international students? Why is it so constantly always being picked as a destination? It's because it has a lot of different factors to offer as well. So Canada has constantly been ranked number one in terms of quality of life. So if you just do a quick Google search, you'll be able to find it, whether it's in terms of safety, infrastructure, wellness, the community. It's just a, such a huge, diverse, welcoming community that you really feel a part of the country as well. So something that is really welcoming and friendly, I felt it the minute I landed in Canada, is that there is no true Canadian that when you think of there's like a specific race or a specific language that comes to mind because Canada has had immigration for years. Like right now, there's over 200 uh, Canadians who come from different birth countries as well. So it's a really diverse country. And of course, that's not the only reason. It has the world-class education system as well. So Canadian system is a primarily public system. So that is something that I will touch upon as well. But the best part about the Canadian education is that it is recognized recognized across the world and within Canada itself. So you don't have to worry if your degree is going to be worth the investment or not. And then something that's a really big draw for international students is the freedom to work during and after your studies as well. So that's something that uh, really was a big factor for me when I was picking my study destination abroad. So that is something that you have to keep in mind and consider as well while you're making a decision. So before we get started, let's look at the Canadian landscape. So Canada has about 10 provinces that spread across and it's the second biggest country in the world. So definitely quite a lot of places for international students to consider when they're looking at studying abroad. So you in the east side, you have Newfoundland, Labrador, Prince Edward Islands. They're all different islands. And then Quebec is the Francophone uh, province, which means you have to have both English and French if you're looking to study or even work in Quebec, where uh, there are a few exceptions, but that's on the majority side. Then we have Ontario, which is by far the most popular destination to study in Canada. You have the prairies, which are Manitoba and Saskatchewan. You also have the beautiful mountains of British Columbia and Alberta. And in the north, you have the Nunavut territories, Yukon and North Northwest Territories as well. So why do you need to know all of these factors? It's because each uh, province has something different to offer based on what you're looking to study as well. So if you're a student who, let's say, is interested in business, in tech, in industries where you have to really like be into finance, so then Ontario is the place for you to be. But if you're a student who is interested in petrochemical engineering or agriculture, for example, then Alberta or British Columbia would be the right place for you because that's where the industries for those demands are set up so like getting a job while you're at school and even after school is something that would be much more easier in the province because of such a huge industrial landscape in the specific area that you're interested in so what is the Canadian education system so this is my favorite topic to dissect for a lot of students because there are students and parents who are very fixated on rankings and grades and that's something that is not the primary thing that in Canada is something you should consider. So Canada has about 96 
public universities that offer over 1500 programs. And the reason that it is so unique is that all degrees are modulated by the Ministry of Education. So there is not going to be a good or a bad university for you. It's going to be the same level of education across, but it's just going to be whether it's a right fit for you or not. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. And then across Canada, it's a four year undergraduate degree, which means you come into your first year and you're applying into a broader faculty. So let's say if you're a student who's looking into psychology, you wouldn't come in and enter the psychology program. You'd actually enter the social sciences program, which is the bigger branch. And then at the end of first year, if you're still interested in psychology, you'll fill out your intent to register with the university and then enter the psychology module in itself. So that first year gives you a lot of freedom, a lot of leeway to understand what kind of um, industry you want to enter and what faculty that you're really interested in, because the education system is very different when you come to university. So even if there's a subject that you really are excited about up until high school, it might not be having the same type of end level of excitement for you at university level, because at that point university is not just teaching you the content but also the application of the content that you're studying so that are two very different things so if you really like something let's say you enjoy doing computer science and coding in your high school but then the application of that could look something very different where you're more related to in terms of a desk job or like what their nine to five would actually look like so that depends on what kind of uh, life you also want to look for you uh, once you graduate as well. And then this is something that we compile because uh, stu students ask us if we're not looking at names and rankings, then what are we actually looking at? So these are just a few things that you should consider when you're looking to study abroad. So you should definitely ask what the average class size is. And this is something that's a really huge factor when it comes to Canada, because a lot of bigger institutions, big comprehensive universities will have an average class size of anywhere between 200 to over a thousand students just based on demand as well. So if you're a student who really enjoys maybe a smaller classroom environment, if you're especially studying international curriculum, then it becomes very difficult for you to adjust to such a huge change. So you have to really see what your learning styles are and what you require as a student when you're making this decision, because it's not just going to be academics that are involved at university, but also a lot of different things that are going to affect your academics as well. Um, another thing that is really important to ask is, are there paid internships and opportunities available across all programs or only certain programs? Because a lot of universities will come and speak about, oh, we have internships, we have co-ops, but then they'll forget to mention that, oh, it's only for STEM related majors or for only specific majors and not across all majors. So you want to make sure you're asking those universities the question of whether it's available for my specific program as well. Another key factor that really comes into play when, especially in your, uh, you know, entering years in university is that whether you're taught by professors or teaching assistants. So in Canada, you have also teaching assistants, which are basically master's students who are doing this part time where they come and teach maybe a first year class or so because the teacher might not have enough time or room to actually go and attend all classes. So you have to ask them if there will be teaching assistants involved or was it usually be professors as well, because that will also impact the learning outcomes in a classroom. And then you should also ask uh, what is the average cost of living in the city? Because even for Canada itself, like city to city, the cost of average living really varies quite a bit where you are placed as well. After that, you also want to ask if you are going to be connecting with industry or alums from that area of what you're looking for. Because a lot of times universities will brag about their alumni who are doing amazing. But then once you actually enter university, you have no experience about actually meeting those alumni that you so much aspire to become one day. So really just interacting and asking them if they really bring their alums to campus or what are the facilities that are set up so that students can actually reach out to these alums as well. So I've just spoken about a few, but it would be nice for you to go through all of this and may really make a list for your own. If you find something that's not mentioned here, try to see which are the things that you really value. And then you put down on those lists and then try to interview the university as much as the university interviews you when you're doing admissions. Because universities look at everything, your profile, your grades and so. So you should also put up enough effort to check out if the university is also a good fit for you. 
And then what are the requirements on general? So when you're looking at Canada, you're looking at your grade results from your grade 10 and grade 12 primarily. So they will require you to complete either like the IB curriculum, A levels curriculum. If you're doing a state board, that's also fine. But grade 12s are the primarily the most important ones because that's what your scholarship is dependent on and also your acceptance. But we also ask you to submit grade 10 and some universities might also ask grade 11 results just to see what your progress has been for across your uh, high school experience. Outside of that, you might hear sometimes that, oh, we require prerequisite courses. That's if you're looking into enter a specific program. Let's say if you're interested in business, some universities might have the requirement of you having math in grade 12 or so. But at like Huron, if you're entering business, you don't need math in grade 12 as long as you've done it in grade 10. So like a lot of different things that you might have to consider for your specific program. And then standardized tests and ACTs are very rare in Canada. So it's not something that we're looking at, but uh, and not something that we encourage students to take if they're looking primarily at Canada, but if they're looking at universities across the globe and North America, and they're taking SAT regardless, then they can still submit those results. Now, students will ask us if submitting SAT scores are going to increase their scholarships. That's not the case for Canada. Usually, if you still submit your SAT scores, let's say you didn't perform really well in grade 12, then we can still fall back on your SAT scores and reflect and see maybe if just wasn't one exam for you that really did it well. So we really look at other different perspectives and SAT might be, you know, uh, on the back end, which might help you get into a university as well. But it wouldn't necessarily give you extra scholarships. And then the other exam that we do need is the language proficiency. So this is not a requirement from the universities. It's more so a requirement for your study permit in visa. So when you're applying for your study permit to come and study in Canada, that's when you'll need either the IELTS or TOEFL. So either of those two. So we always recommend students to take it regardless if they're entering 11th or 12th because they are valid for up to two to three years. So you have plenty of time as well. And then there are some things where our admission conditions and transfer credits. So admission condition is basically when you're and applying to Canada, you're applying one year in advance. So you're using your predicted scores to get admission. So when you actually finish your final exams and have those results in, you can submit that to the university. And let's say you performed better than your predicted scores, you'll get an updated scholarship amount as well. So you'll just get an unconditional offer letter. And then transfer credits are available for students who are doing uh, international curriculum. If they really performed well in that specific subject, then they automatically get a transfer credit, which means when they're entering university, they'll just have a lighter workload and they can take fewer courses compared to the other students. All right. Moving on. So this is something that I was very confused about as a student when making a decision, because when I would look at universities online or their programs online, I'd see these terminologies. So basically, OK, we have a question. Yes, please. Uh, yes, yeah, since you actually talked about transfer credits, uh, Namra, mm -hmm. I thought maybe we can ask this question at this point. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, we have a CBSE student who's also given some AP exams. Yeah. So, uh, and you, I see that you give credits for AP exams. If we can go to the previous slide, please. Yeah. So, there, uh, so would you recommend that CBSE students give AP exams just in order to get these credits? I would recommend not because for us, they're primarily more focused results are their CBSE scores. So we want them to perform really well in 12th grade. But if they're more spending time towards AP just to get a transfer credit and then they neglect their CBSE boards, then it does not work well in their favor because mm -hmm. for sure they're better uh, requirement is to actually enter the university with a better scholarship that's dependent on their CBSE grades. And then most students, even if they have transfer credit, it depends on how comfortable they are with the subject, because some students still prefer to take it. Let's say if they have a business transfer credit, they'll still come and take the business course because they want that refresher in their first year, not miss out and enter second year directly. So it depends on how comfortable they are with the subject that they're taking the AP level exams for as well. All right, that's that's very helpful. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so moving on to all of these interesting terminology. Basically, there are three different factors, which is a major, a minor, and a specialization. A major is basically a primary area of studies. 
So across four years of your undergraduate degree, you have to complete 20 credits. Now, by credits, we, it's just a fancy way of saying classes or courses. So basically 20 courses across your four years. And if you're looking at a major, if you want to, let's say, major in finance, then you're spending at least seven to 10 credits in a major. If you're looking at a minor, then you're spending at least four credits in a minor. And then specialization, you're spending anywhere between 13 to 15 of those 20 credits. So it's basically the amount of concentration of the courses in your specific field that you're interested in. So a lot of students who, let's say, want to do a double major, which means they're spending seven to eight credits in one specific field, let's say psychology, and the other seven to eight could be in sociology. So they can combine those two programs to graduate with a double major degree sometimes students are not really focused on two areas but they let's say are interested in a language so for me personally i ended up doing a specialization in finance and my minor was in french so you can combine a lot of different programs and you have a lot of leeway but that's not something that you have to be worried about right now because each university has their own academic advisor team so when you sit down with them one-on-one -on -one, you can really connect with them tell them your areas of interest and your first year in canada that broader education education really allows you to experiment with different courses and at the end of first year you can decide what major or what specialization you want to be in and then we also get a lot of different questions about you know what is the terminology in terms of i want to do a bba or i want to do a bcom so that's not something that we generally call degrees in Canada, it could be worded differently. So for example, at Huron, we call it Bachelors of Management and Organizational Studies, so BMOS. So if you're looking at programs, just don't tell a university, I want to do or oh, data science, like we call it business intelligence. So just be more careful of the language that you're using. So you might say, oh, this university doesn't have the program I'm looking for, but it might just be called something different. So just be more elaborate when you're looking at programs and if you're not understanding what it is about, just click on it and you'll be able to get a def definitive brief on what the program really offers as well. Now, this is something that Canada is also really well known for is working during your study. What does this really entail? You have a lot of different experiences that you can do in your undergraduate experience. So Canada is really known for their experiential learning that comes within the courses itself. So across all universities, you'll have some sort of experiential learning happening, whether it's within the city, within uh, the country or even outside of the country as well. And then a lot of clubs practical knowledge is uh, then gotten through to internships and co-op opportunities as well as research projects. So you have a lot of different avenues where you can enter, even in your academics, that's based on your area of interest. And then working on campus or off campus are both options open to international students. This is something that also is restricted in some other countries. So some other countries might only allow you to work on campus, which means only jobs that's available within the university. But that's not the case within Canada. You can work on campus, even outside of campus. Essentially, there's no restriction even with nationality. So you're open to applying to all internships that a Canadian citizen would be able to apply as, to as well. So you don't have to worry about that. And then you can study, work, and stay as well. So there are different avenues that students take up, but just to know that you have the choice to be in Canada long term is definitely a positive for you. So students who graduate with a four-year undergraduate degree get something that's called a three-year postgraduate work permit. In those three years, you can work, you can stay longer in Canada, and then also eventually, if you like, want to immigrate to Canada, you can apply for the permanent residency as well. So Canada definitely has all the avenues available. And for me personally, that was a good option to know that, yo, oh, just as long as I study, I can still come be back and work. It's not that I had to leave and immediately find another solution as well. So it's good to have both doors open where you can oh, stay longer in Canada if you want or return to your home country as well. Now, let's talk a bit about Ontario, because Ontario is by far the biggest economical engine of Canada. So just to give you perspective, uh, Ontario's GDP is twice that of the second GDP, which is Quebec as a province. So it just really is the place where everything happens for Canada. And that's why most international students, 48% actually pick Ontario to be in. Now, Ontario has about 21 universities, and you can see they're quite spread out across Ontario, and that's where you can apply through OUAC. 
Now, OUAC is the common application portal for Ontario universities. It's basically Ontario University Application Center. But a lot of all universities also have their internal application system as well. So it really depends on the number of universities you're applying to. So if you're applying to more than one, then you have to apply through OUAC. But if you're applying to just one in Ontario, you can also make a direct application to that specific university. So it depends on the way that you wish to apply, but it's mainly online. And then the fee depends on which method you pick. So for example, OUAC does a base charge of $250 and you can pick three programs across three universities. And each time you add a university, you pay an extra $50 as well. Otherwise, for example, Huron, our direct application fee is about $75 as well. And then timeline is very important. So for students who are looking at Canada to enter September 2024, their applications have started this last month in September 2023. And they would apply online if they're using the common portal. They'll fill it out. They'll submit the documents. And then they'll receive an email which then allows them to enter the specific university portals as well. And then the universities will communicate using those portals. If they need extra documents, if the documents sub submitted are enough, they'll hear back about their admissions as well. And then as soon as they are get hearing back from universities, it's advised that students accept their offer and then start the work permit, study permit application as well, because that takes another month or two months as well. So it's a really long process, which is why applications for Canada start one year in advance. And then what are the scholarships and then the tuition costs? So tuition can vary anywhere between twelve to $65,000 Canadian per year. And then, then there are basically four different types of scholarship. We have merit-based scholarship, which is based on performance. So this is your grade-based scholarship. So if you're scoring really well in your grade 12 results, that's when you're uh, eligible for merit-based scholarship. There's need-based scholarship, which basically means if that's questions of affordability, then you can apply for the need-based scholarship. But there aren't too many universities in Canada that do offer an aid-based scholarship. Huron is one of them, so I'll speak about that later. Then we have theme or name scholarship, which is basically given through alums. So if an alum was really keen in a specific sport or a specific industry, they'll then have a theme or name scholarship. These are usually not as big or grand, but they are spread out across your four years of university as well. So once you enter university, you can look up what specific scholarships are available for upper year students. And then government funded scholarships. Sometimes governments also have treaties where they allow students to go abroad and study and also pay partially for their tuition and funds as well. So that's something that could be looked into. And then as an admissions advisor, what are we actually looking for students when we are asking for the scholarship applications? We're really looking at four different things. We're looking at their extracurriculars and who they are as a person. So when the scholarship applications come in, we already know the student is excellent because of their grades, but we also want to know who they are as a person that's when we're looking at what kind of extracurricular activities are they involved in so what is the breadth of activities have they just focused in on one or are they really experimenting and doing other things as well this could be for example if they are involved in the student clubs in student council if they are involved in volunteering if they're uh, involved on campus outside of campus and then we also want to see the depth of these activities we don't want to see a you know, course that's done over one week and they submitted as a certificate of participation because then that really doesn't show as much. We have students who submit like maybe 10 certificate of participation but don't have really keen passions or interests and that's where they lose points. So we really want to make sure that students are actually doing extracurricular activities that they're passionate about that they can speak to because when it comes to big scholarships, there are interviews as well. So when we're conducting interview, it's really easy to differentiate from a student who's actually passionate from a student who just did it to tick a box on their application. So just make sure that you're able to take up different activities that could be exciting to you. And then to be authentic, because a lot of students think that there needs to be an outcome or there needs to be a certificate in order to, for that extracurricular to count. But that's necessarily not the case, because when you're authentic, you can tell us, oh, you were really focusing on trying to get something done, but that did not happen. That is also OK. And then also your own growth and uh, goals as well. So 
we do not want students to apply and use one scholarship application for all universities. That's a terrible mistake. When you're looking at applying for scholarships, actually do some research about the university. Some universities might have really good research programs that you're interested in. Some might have really good exchange programs. So when you're actually curating these essays, you want to just slightly weave into what the university is about. So you could say, oh, as a student i would love to do this when i actually win the scholarship and i'm on your campus because i can see myself giving back to the community through these research opportunities as well so just try to be authentic and then weave in the university so we know that you're actually a keen student as well and then to talk a bit about huron this is one of our beautiful buildings on campus and we're located in london ontario so Huron is actually a 160-year-old institution, which means it was founded in 1863. A lot of students are always puzzled when I tell them Huron is actually older than Canada itself. So Canada was founded in 1867. And then uh, just a few years earlier, Huron was founded and we have a legacy of leadership with heart. So you'll see all of these different faculty, uh, sorry, uh, students who come from different walks of life who have actually embraced what our ethos is, which is leading with heart. I'll just take, speak about Neil Deng. So Neil is actually our current student in third year, but he came from Kakuma refugee camp and he is now just an amazing person to be around on campus with. And he was recently invited to the United Nations General Assembly in New York to speak and address the comments. So it is an amazing type of environment that you be in. And you'll see a lot of different, like really people who are doing very well in the different industries and inspiring alums as well. Now, what is Huron? Just a few quick factors. Uh, Canada's top three largest companies, which is in their technology aspect, in their business, as well as telecommunications, they're all run by Huron graduates. And Huron is really able to focus on their students. This is because our average class size is 30 and not more than 50 in one classroom, which means you'll actually have a really good interaction with your students faculty and really engage in the discussions that happen in a classroom. And that's why we're also able to provide students with a lot of different opportunities because we're looking at the quality of students and not the quantity of students. And all of our classes are taught by PhD or MBA professors. We don't have teaching assistants on campus, which is why you have like actual people from the industries really be able to connect you to different avenues within the subject of your interest. And Huron is about 1,700 students. So 30% is international, which comes from across 50 different countries. So a really diverse campus that you're going to be a part of. And then something that's really good at Huron is that 94% of our students graduate into employment or pursue their graduate studies as well. So that is a really good statistic because we're able to give them personalized attention and care across the four years and even after. So what are the program Huron offers? Huron focuses on two things and we do it really well. We look at the business program as well as arts and social science. So within business, there are different specializations like accounting, finance, business intelligence, marketing and sustainability, management, entrepreneurship. And then within Bachelor of Arts, we have economics, languages, global studies, French, history, philosophy, political science, psychology. So just a lot of different programs for you to explore. And my favorite part was that I could pick up any 10 that I really liked in my first year. So a fun fact about me is that I actually started out in the social sciences program. And I was a science student all the way through until grade 12 and had never taken business or economics. But when I came to Huron, I took up business in first year just to explore it for fun. And then I enjoyed it so much that I changed my majors to business in, uh, instead. So you have a lot of flexibility and breathing room and you really are able to make your own independent decisions when you're, you're able to understand all of the different programs as well. And then the biggest benefit is that you can combine it and actually have a specialized degree. So all of the programs that I just listed out, but also the programs from Western Campus, which is over 400 programs across Western University that you can combine as well. And then we also have the IB Business School, which offers the dual degree program. So the way it works is that Huron was actually the founding institution of Western, but Huron remained special with its 
class sizes as well as the programs that it offers. So it only does business and social sciences. But if there are students who are looking at doing other programs as well that they're interested in, then they can take it across the street at Western campus as well. So for example, my brother, actually he did computer science at Western and he combined it with Japanese at Huron as his double major. So you can really cross combine uh, programs from across campus and enjoy your studies as well. And then the IV Business School uh, it offers the dual degree program, which means instead of doing your four year degree, you put in one extra year and you graduate with two degrees at once, which is an honors business administration degree and another degree that you pick up at Huron. So it's a really good program. And Huron actually sends more students per capita to the IV Business School. So you have a lot of students who actually go to IV and then graduate and come back for their fifth year, finish their double degree, and then move on into the working sphere as well. So a really go keen partnership that we have with Ivy. And another fun fact is that Ivy was actually started in Huron's basement years ago. So a lot of these campuses are very close knit to Huron. Shortly, you'll see a map where you'll be able to see a lot of different uh, places, and then you'll see the proximity to Huron's campus as well. And this is something that we're also very proud of, is that Huron is the only university in Ontario to partner with the Harvard Business School. So Harvard each summer saves about 20 seats for Huron students to offer the core business program. And this is conducted online, but it offers students to actually be taught by the Harvard faculty. You connect with their network, and then you actually have an exam which you pass and then get a certificate as well. But the best part is that you can do this over summer, and you also have a lot of uh, support in terms of aid. So let's say you really want to do the program, but if you don't want to have the finances to fund the program, then we also have financial aid available for students as well. And this is also open to all programs. So we don't only see business students taking this up, but a lot of social science students as well, who might not want to commit to a major or minor in business, but also want to have some understanding of business, then they can commit one summer to do the Harvard Core Business Program to actually get the understanding standings of a business world as well. And then what is the Huron distinction? I've already spoken about classroom and the class size makes a huge difference, but we also offer guaranteed paid internships to students across all programs. So in your four years of university, you will actually at least have one internship that you're able to do. But we have students who actually end up interning for across four years as well. So that was my personal experience too. I worked across four years on campus, off campus, doing different internships. And then my favorite part is the personalized support that you get in terms of campus, the community and safety. So the way it works is that because our staff to faculty ratio is so small, you're actually able to get support immediately in case anything goes wrong or if you need any support even outside of academics, whether it's mental health, uh, well-being services, library and writing services. So you have all those avenues available to you as well. And then this is the most exciting part about our academics is the international exchange that we offer students. So as a business student, we do internship uh, sorry, exchanges where we have a trip to Dubai for the international hub of business, where you actually go for a week during your uh, break and you uh, have exchange with the American University of Dubai, you meet with the company heads, you really about, understand about the international hub of business, and you're not doing anything except for really engrossing yourself in that atmosphere, and then coming back after a week and writing your research paper on your experience. The same goes where we take students to Patagonia in Argentina for the Global Studies Program, and for, to Rwanda for political science. So Rwanda is also really exciting where students actually meet with the survivors of the Rwandan genocide, actually give back to the community, really involve themselves and see what the survivors have been through and then come back and write their research on what their experience has been like. So a lot of different programs that you'd be able to take up. And then somebody who's also really passionate about internships uh, sorry, uh, about their research, then Huron could be the right place for them because Huron offers something that's called the CURL, which is the Center of Undergraduate Research and Learning, where a student can come and tell us about any topic that they're interested in and they want to explore and do research in. And then Huron provides them $1,500 in funding as well as pairs them up with the professor to do that research. So that's something that Taylor did. And Taylor was interested in child psychology, especially 
actually she traveled to Norway because Norway has a very unique, you know, kindergartner system where she understood the workings and she came back and wrote her research paper. And that's what got her into Harvard University for her postgraduate studies as well. So you have a lot of students who really look at different topics. And if you are passionate about something, you can come and do it. And it's not just something you do one time. If you want to do it multiple times, that's open to you as well. And what is something that we do outside of academics that makes students at Huron more unique? So on the left side, you'll see what a Huron student resume looks like. And on the bottom is what most university resumes look like. So Huron really allows students to have a plethora of opportunities to choose from for their outside academic work as well. So for example, Scotiabank Career Accelerator Program is one of the biggest programs that we run at the undergraduate level. It's a four year program, which is something that you do outside side of your studies but it really allows you to be ready for the workforce so there are different avenues within the programs a lot of different things that you have to do but it's funded by Scotia Bank, which is one of the biggest banks for us to actually do the program and we have a lot of graduates who are successful who have done this program and really delved much deeper into the workforce and started at positions much higher than the average as well then we have the RBC Community Innovative Bootcamp. So let's say students are interested, but they don't want to commit four years. They want to really understand something in a short time. Then we have the Innovation Bootcamp that's done across weekends. So you are uh, applying, you can get selected. And then that is a bootcamp where we get a nonprofit to come in or a corporate uh, business to come in and tell us what their issues are, what is the real world, uh, facing like and what their challenges are in those references and then that allows us to give students the workload and we tell them okay this is the problem that they're facing how are you going to solve them and really giving the tools and techniques of innovation and really closely collaborating with different uh, businesses to be able to allow them to have a complete plan so we have students who actually work for example with RBC to help which is the Royal Bank of Canada to help with their problems and provide them solutions. And then upon completing the bootcamp, they also had internships uh, made available for our Huron students as well. And then volunteering goes hand in hand with our motto of leadership with heart. And that's something that all students on Huron campus are very passionate about. And then outside of that, we have something that's really exciting is entrepreneurship and social innovation. So. A lot of you might have heard about Shark Tank in India, which is an entrepreneurship program or like a reality, like a TV show that happens. So in Canada, we have something that's called the Dragon's Den. And on the bottom right, you'll actually see one of the dragons, West Hall, come to campus and take pictures. He actually was a keynote speaker for our homecoming. And he also actually got his books, which were pre-signed to give out to students as well. So a lot of different people that you would meet from across the different industries that really help fuel your passions as well. Now, these are just a few internships that our students have done across from different fields. You'll recognize a few of these logos. And to briefly speak about the different types of internships, there are three of them. Students can either do a full-time summer internship. So across four months of summer, they have a lot of freedom and leeway where they can work because they have no studies. And then between uh, year three and year four, if they want, they can take a year off and do an entire full year internship as well. And the last one is a part-time internship that they can do hand in hand along with their academics and studies during your school year as well. So it depends on what the student is comfortable with. If they want to do it both academics and internship, otherwise they can do it over summer where they only focus on internships as well. And this is what uh, a career map could look like. So this is what our career development team does with you. So you have your personal career advisor who sits down and backward maps your four-year undergraduate experience. So a lot of students come to us and tell us exactly what they want to do once they graduate. And a lot of students don't know what they want to do once they graduate. I was one of the latter. So you really have a lot of different internships and a lot of different modules that they built into your career vision that helps you guide you across your four years so for me personally for example in my second year i was doing an internship with the bank because i was a finance student and then i realized oh banking was not my cup of tea in my third year i did an internship with a non-profit and i enjoyed it much more in my fourth year i was doing an internship on campus as well so i really was able to delve and see what kind of different career trajectories could be as a student and which industry i really enjoyed as well and then 
a lot of students uh, ask us about our alumni. So we have alumni across the different spheres in different industries. And the best part is you actually meet the alumni when they come on campus. So I did not have like family in Canada when I went where they were giving me internships as soon as I landed. But I did have this network of Huron alumni, which was like my family, because they were the, the ones who was able to connect with me to do coffee chats, to really teach me networking and the inside workings of the corporate worlds as well. So we also have alumni mentorship where you tell us what your industry and what your passion is, and then we connect you with an alumni from Huron. So on the left are all the students who of Huron, and to their right is their alums who are through the alumni internship program. So I'll just speak about Caitlin. Caitlin was actually a business student, but she was also really interested in fashion. So we connected her with Sarah who works as the director for Lululemon. And Lululemon is one of the biggest fashion uh, clothing companies that is based out of Vancouver. So she was really able to engage and connect with Sarah and understand that. And then upon graduation, uh, she actually has an offer from Harry Rosen, which is also one of the leading fashion uh, brands within North America as well. So a lot of different avenues and a lot of different things that come into play because you get to connect with people from the industry that you're looking at. And then this is the culture of care I was talking about. So we have a lot of different avenues. We have the wellness center, which is located on campus, which has the wellness support team who will be there to connect with you throughout the academic year to actually help you with any issues that you're going through. The academic advising is to look at your academics and we it personally for you to personalize your degree. We have the student engagement office that looks at everything outside of academics, so all the fun things that happen in university. And the library and learning support staff is also something that was really helpful for me because they were there where they have paid tutors, which means you don't have to pay them and they're available for free. So if you're struggling with anything, um, if you're struggling with a specific program, so like if you're having difficulties with math, you can have a one on one with a math tutor. If you are doing research and if you're writing a paper and you have no clue where to start or you have no clue what a citation is or what even how to like, you know, do the APA style for a paper, then you have the English tutors as well who sit down and teach you what it actually is all about. So you have all of these different support system on campus as well. And then this is my favorite week at Huron, which is the International Welcome Week. So we pick students up from the airport. And this one week is full of activities where we really help students to settle into Canada. So we get their bank accounts set up. We get them their SIM cards. We get them groceries and anything that they would need for their residence. But even outside of that, we do a lot of fun things where we take them to nearby sightseeing. We take them to the beach. We have a bonfire. We have a lot of different events just so that students are actually able to connect with other international students. And then we have the orientation week where it's another fun week that comes after, but that's all along with the domestic students. So once you are adjusted to the country and the culture, you actually then start uh, connecting with the domestic students who come in for orientation week as well. So where is Huron located? Huron is located in London, Ontario, which is about two hours away from Toronto. Uh, but we pick students up from the airport. However, there is an airport in London as well. So sometimes they want to fly in directly to London. That's also an option. And then it's really the economic hub. So London is also a short driving distance to Detroit and Michigan. So it's in the economic hub of the belt of trade between US and Canada. And then this is something I'll talk about briefly is the four seasons that you do experience in Canada, because a lot of students are worried about, oh, it's going to be cold all across the year. It's going to be snowing, but that's not the case. You actually have four distinct seasons of spring, summer, autumn and winter where you're able to enjoy everything. And we want to make sure that you're not like, you know, just closed off in your room during winter. So. A lot of different activities happen on campus. So the student engagement team and the resident staff, they plan events across the year. So some events are within the residence, some are outside of the residence. So I remember I was a residence assistant in my second year. So I worked on campus. I lived there to help the incoming first year class. And we would take them outside ice skating during winter. Sometimes you would take them sledging down the hill so that they really are into the outside winter activities as well and are really enjoying winter too. So you have all the four distinct seasons that you can enjoy across Canada. And this is what uh, the best of both worlds is about, where you have 
uh, the access at Huron, where you're a Huron student, but you're also a Western student. So that means you have a Western student ID and you graduate with a Western degree. So you get the best of both worlds where you have your closer, smaller bubble, but you also have the bigger campus to explore whenever you want and all their facilities and amenities. So you can be a part of their clubs. They have over 200 clubs as well. If you want, you can be at Huron's library. Otherwise, you can walk over to Western's library. So red is all that's Huron and then surrounding all of that in purple and light purple is Western. And then just across well, uh, Huron, you'll also see the Ivy Business School that's also in dark purple. So it's a very close proximity to Huron campus. And even though we talk about how rankings aren't a big deal in Canada, we still get the question of what is our institution ranked at? So we do provide those to you as well. So Huron is ranked top three in terms of graduate employability in Canada. And also it is the top 1% of institutions globally and six nationally. So it has by far uh, amazing rankings as well. And then it's also the only Canadian university to achieve the highest possible QS ranking, which is a five plus QS stars as well. So just a good to brief to know about Huron and then what do students need to get in there are different uh, requirements for the different curriculums so for IB you need a minimum of 30 IB points which includes your bonus points or a competitive of 35 there is a subject requirement of business if you're looking at the business program you need to have math now this math can be at the HL or the HL level and it can be math applications or math analysis as well so any math is fine for students who are looking at British curriculum, so A-levels, you can either do three A-levels or four AS level courses with grades of B or higher. There's no specific uh, subject that you have to pick at A-levels, but the higher you score, the more scholarships you get. For CBSE and ICSB, again, at least an 80% in your grade 12 or higher, the higher you score, the more scholarships. And then you don't need math in grade 10, uh, sorry, in 12, but you do need it in grade 10 as well. And then just the USN uh, curriculum is about four senior level courses with 85% GPA or higher. And if you're doing an overseas Canadian curriculum, then 85% or higher in the select grade 12 courses. And the prerequisites vary province to province, so you can reach out to the institutions and ask them what subjects they're looking for. Now, what is the tuition fee? So our tuition fee without any aid or scholarship is between fifty to $60,000 Canadian. But we offer scholarships or financial aid that goes up to 50% of the education as well. So twenty-five dollars to $30,000 is what the tuition drops do. And then how do you get these scholarships? is we have three different types the first one is the international entrance scholarship which is between four to sixty thousand dollars across four years so this is the one that's based on your academics a merit-based scholarship so students who have an 85 percent or higher in their grade 12 will look at uh, will have chances of getting the scholarship but for this, uh, you have to understand that it's based on the incoming class average. So if the incoming class average is higher, then your chances of getting the scholarship is also more competitive. So you'll have to make sure you're performing much better and are ahead of the bell curve as well. Then we have the presidential scholarship, which is 50% of the tuition is given off. So it's very prestigious, but it's given to 10 students across the world. So students actually who are getting at least a 90% or higher in the grade 12 have really good extracurriculars who are nominated by the schools are then uh, considered for this scholarship. And then if you, uh, based on your written applications and submissions, you're then shortlisted and asked to take part in a video interview. Once the video interview is done, then 10 students from across the globe are selected for this scholarship. And then lastly, we have financial aid, which is anywhere from 5 to 50% of the tuition as well. So let's say you hear back from Huron, you get to know what your tuition and scholarships look like, but you know that affordability across four years is going to be a concern where you aren't sure if you can afford it because it is expensive, then you can apply for financial aid as well. This is basically an additional document that you would fill out that asks you a lot of different things about like bank statements, tax returns, um, who are the primary income earners in the family, how many students, uh, how many dependents are there, like if there are siblings, a lot of different information that you provide to the university and then the finance team looks at it and then grants anywhere from 5 to 50% of the tuition based off as well. So just to make it clear, this is not a loan or anything that you have to pay back. It is simply a tuition waiver, which means that the tuition cost is reduced for you for across four years. 
So that is all that I had to share. But if anyone has any questions, I'll be more than happy to take them up. Otherwise, I will also just put down my uh, contact details on the screen here so anyone can reach out to me as well. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Namra. I think it was a very comprehensive and an interesting uh, presentation. I particularly loved the slide that said, never rely on a title or a certificate, tell your story. It's yeah. something that I think all of us believe in and uh, mm -hmm. something that we also try to tell our students every now and then that just, you know, sometimes you've got to do things that really bring you joy and it will Absolutely. automatically show in not just the applications front, but every, every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you've covered most of the questions that I wanted to ask. But mm -hmm. uh, just to clarify, uh, so at Huron, uh, we choose the faculty and not the major while applying. Yes. The first year? Okay. That's correct. So that's not just Huron. That would be across all universities as well. So um, it depends on what subject you're looking at. And that's on the basis of what faculty you're applying to. So even on OUAC, when you're applying to Huron, you'll see two options, either arts and social science and business, and then you pick which one your subject lies within. Okay, great. And this other question, it, it's a generic one, but mm -hmm. uh, so on OUAC, you know, we get the opportunity to rank the university's programs mm -hmm. as per our preferences. Mm -hmm. Does that really make a difference when universities are assessing an individual application? I would say not really, because we do get to see where they have ranked when they are applying to universities. So we get to see if they ranked us in their top three or outside of that. But that just differs in terms of our outreach uh, initiative. So we get to know where the students' headspace is at, but it's not something that would affect their admissions or scholarships necessarily. Right. And um, would there be a um, cap on the number of programs a student can apply to at a particular university? So there's no cap in terms of application, but there would be in terms of, uh, so OUAC treats every program as a separate application. So Correct. even if you're applying to one university and you're filling out three applications, then that's all you get to apply to unless you want to pay more and add on. So there's no cap. You can apply to multiple as well. Okay, awesome. Great. And you did mention, um, you know, that's nomination based scholarship, which is the presidential scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, it, would this be merit and need both or is it so the uh, presidential scholarship is a purely merit and extracurricular based scholarship it's not a need -based. and for need based okay. they could apply to financial aid then. okay great and then students don't have to pick one over the other they can apply to everything and then based on their eligibility they can get whichever one is well. okay awesome thank you so much um any other questions anybody Yeah, but I like that curl one also, this curl research thing, you know. That mm -hmm. is so interesting because some of the times, you know, the students don't get time to get do a certain kind of a research when they're at school yeah. level. And they really love to do that. So probably that is one of the good options you are providing over there. Oh, I agree. Because a lot of students come to us and tell us, we want to do research because we know it's going to help us, but we don't even know where to get started. And that's where the CURL research program also comes in. And then uh, I'll just share a quick example. So for me, I took a governance, leadership and ethics course in my third year. I was just taking it for fun. It was an elective. And then we got the option to choose our own research topic. And being COVID era, I decided to look at how women leadership was doing in terms of political landscape and how they were performing much better than male counterparts. So that was my topic of research. I just submitted it without thinking much about it. And then I heard back from my professor telling me that she's actually writing a book on the same topic and publishing a podcast very soon. And if I was interested in doing research with her. So it's not just through CURL, but you'll have those interactions with with your students and your faculty in your classrooms as well that actually get you all those research experiences as well. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, no worries. Any other questions, anybody? There was a question on the chat mm -hmm. box earlier. Um, so the collaboration that you mentioned between Huron and Harvard Business School, does mm -hmm. that happen on your campus or 
So oh. it's uh, an online module. So it's not something that students would have to travel for. So they can do it online and it's more relaxed that way. And then they have, I think, two intakes. But the one that's in summer is the one that's most popular. And then based on their timeline as well, there is an extended version or the normal version and a compressed version as well if you want to do it quickly or if you want to take your time with it as well. So then it depends on the student. Right. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, Sushi, any question? Okay, I think that's okay, that. No uh, yeah, but we do have your uh, email ID. We would definitely mm -hmm. reach out to you in case of any uh, questions. We, of course, wish you a fantastic application season and thank you. Uh, thank you so much namra for doing this i personally learned a lot i think i'm definitely going to spend some time on the website today okay thank you so much thank you have a good day thank everyone you. have a great day bye